What's the craziest thing that has ever happened to you on the street? That's from Kara at Wisconsin University. I have a song on this album called Praise the Lord and Pass the Ammunition. And it's a pretty whacked out song. It's probably the most whacked out song from the record. And um, I had heard this statement from an old World War II song. And I don't know of many people that know that term. And about two days after I recorded the vocals for that song, I was driving in downtown to meet a friend of mine in Los Angeles for lunch. And this homeless guy came up to me and tapped on my window. And I, I lowered the window and, and uh, he said, hey, do you have some change you know, for food and stuff? So I gave him some money. And he goes, praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. And I go, I'm like, I grabbed his hand. I'm like, what did you say? You know? And he goes, you know what I said? And I said, well, why did you say that? He goes, have a good day, bro. And I just, I was just driving to my lunch going, that didn't just happen. How many songs did you write for Elect the Dead? How did you pick the ones that will be on the album? Omar at Pace University. I have 12 songs on the record, 12 Gods of Sumer, 12 hours in a day, 12 months in a year. And uh, how did I pick the songs? They kind of, the ones that fitted with each other as a whole kind of uh, picture ended up on the record. Um, I picked the ones that by themselves were strong, powerful songs that could also fit within the frame. <laughs> Work of all the other songs. Would you ever consider running for political office? That's from Jeremy at Princeton. I've, <laughs> I've thought about it, but you know, I, it's not for me. I, I, I'm better just being uh, a musician and, and, and a songwriter and a poet. And I like to reflect the truth of our times and don't want to be in a situation where I'm going to have to uh, compromise or sacrifice anything. What sacrifices have you made for your musical career? That's from Arthur at University of Illinois. Once I realized that music was what I needed to do to be happy, I did have to sacrifice things. I had a software company actually that I was running at the time. I had to kind of, you know, um, sacrifice that kind of security of, of, of making a good income and instead go for this world that's, you know, of doing music that could have been financially unrewarding possibly because, you know, not many musicians are able to live their life from it, but I'm, I'm thankful that I was able to do so. I mean, you got to follow your vision no matter where it takes you, no matter what the roads and bumps are.